thanks a lot for the for the um, opportunity to present um, our work um, and our interest. And um, before going into that, I would like to uh, briefly introduce you to um, to the team and the lab, which is really fantastic to work with. And and as a group, we are interested. We're fascinated by the fact that well, from from a genetic perspective, we're all only. 1% human and 99% microbial, uh, looking at all the genes, um, the microbiome and codes. And uh, more, more specifically, we are, we are interested in the question, how does the microbiome contribute to host metabolism? And the way we do that, we like to use pharmaceutical drugs as um, chemical tools to disentangle uh, metabolism by the microbiome and, and the host. So in this case, in this study here, we use a nucleoside analog, which you can see in those uh, stoichiometrical uh, conversion plots that in vitro both human, mouse, and um, microbial uh, enzymes can convert it to, um, to actually a toxic metabolite. Um, from in vitro to in vivo, so does it really matter? To do so, um, we use, in this case, um, um, notobiotic animals in blue conventional laboratory animals in orange germ-free animals that do not harbor a microbiome. And as expected from the in vitro data, you can see that um, in germ-free animals, the microbiome cannot convert the drug into its drug metabolite, whereas conventional animals, the microbiome uh, completely depletes the drug, converts it, and that a drug metabolite gets absorbed, leading to um, high accumulation of the drug metabolite in serum only of conventional uh, conventional animals. We then use this type of uh, multi-compartment kinetic data to set up a multi-compartment uh, physiological uh, mathematical models, which allow us to quantify what is indeed the effect of microbiome metabolism and contribution to a, a given metabolite in the serum. And you can see in this case here um, of this nucleoside analog, we found that 70% of the metabolite exposure in serum is actually due to direct metabolism of the drug um, in, in the intestine. Um, another important feature of the microbiome is the fact that we are, there's very, very uh, strong interpersonal differences in the microbiome composition, which triggers the question, well, does this also translate in interpersonal differences in uh, microbial community metabolism. And when we use, again, like drug metabolism as a proxy for metabolic readout for microbial communities, and I show here data for um, 28 um, human gut communities and their metabolism of a calcium channel blocker, diltiazine, you can clearly see that when we look at the production of the drug metabolite, we can distinguish fast, intermediate, and slow metabolites in gut communities. Um, which asks, uh, which brings up the question, can we explain those differences in uh, gut community metabolism at the molecular level? And to do so, we chose um, a bottom-up approach where we took 271 uh, clinical drugs. We incubated those with 76 bacterial isolates from the human gut under anaerobic conditions. And then we used high throughput metabolomics to measure whether drugs get metabolized uh, by those um, bacterial isolates. And strikingly, we found that um, uh, two, uh, two out of three drugs or two thirds of the tested drugs got metabolized by at least one of the bacteria that we tested, which you see here summarized in this heat map where you have in the y-axis the 76 um, species, in the x-axis the 176 drugs that we found to be metabolized, and each square uh, represents an interaction. The brighter uh, the square is, the stronger a species metabolizes a given drug. If we then use hierarchical clustering on this data, we find that the, 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 the bacterial species, they cluster according to their phylogenetic relationship, which might not be that surprising. It just tells us that uh, genetic information matters for the metabolic capacity of those bacteria. If we then do clustering of the drugs, we found that uh, drugs that are metabolized by similar bacteria, as shown here, um, but this group of drugs that get specifically metabolized by Bacteroidetes or the Bacteroidales phylum, um, they all actually contain ester groups, which are probably hydrolyzed uh, by the bacteria. However, we cannot tell for sure. Therefore, the question, can we identify the drug 
metabolites that are produced by those microbes. And to do so, we again apply metabolomics, this time untargeted metabolomics, where in each of those 4,000 samples, we measure a few thousand metabolic features to then ask the question, do we, can we identify specific um, uh, metabolic features that are specific to uh, the incubation of a given drug. So, for example, if we take um, the bacterium Bacteroidetes tetiota omicron, we incubated with, again, diltiazine. We measured 6,000 metabolic features shown as gray dots. There's only two features that are very specific to the incubation with diltiazine. Diltiazine itself, which is great. That's a good positive control. That's what we spiked into those samples. And the second um, uh, feature, which is exactly um, 42.011 uh, Dalton smaller, suggesting the deacetylation uh, of the drug. We then perform this type of analysis for all um, drug micro pairs and calculated the exact mass difference between drug and uh, um, and putative drug metabolites, which you can see here in this histogram. And interestingly, we find that certain drug, certain mass shifts between drug and microbiome produced drug metabolites are conserved among drugs, suggesting that multiple drugs undergo the same metabolic conversion by the microbiome. And here again, an example, our minus 42.011, which we now know is a deacetylation, has actually nine hits, and all those nine hits have an acetyl group, which can be cleaved off um, by, by gut microbes. So as we know, better understand how um, microbes from the gut microbiome metabolize diverse drugs and a little bit about the underlying chemistry. What we were wondering, can we identify the bacterial genes responsible for this metabolism? And to do so, we returned to our initial pipeline, but instead of uh, testing different wild type bacteria, we took bacterial strains from the gut that were potent metabo drug metabolizers, we took its genomic DNA, we sheared it into pieces, random pieces that we then cloned into an expression vector into E. coli to then test those, um, uh, th those strains, E. coli strains for a gain function um, to metabolize a drug and convert it into a given drug metabolite. This way, we tested 50,000 clones by LCMS, which um, helped us or which um, led to the identification of 19 metabolic genes alone in B-theta, um, which collectively metabolized 17 different clinical drugs. We then also verified each of those hits biochemically, leading to um, resulting in a metabolic network shown on the right, where in the inner circle, we have the 19 drugs metabolized. We have in red, we do have the, um, the, the gut microbiome uh, encoded enzymes that metabolize the drug and the most outer circle. We do have the drug metabolites that are produced. As we now have this list of drug metabolizing um, enzymes of the gut microbiome, uh, we wanted to return to our initial question and ask, well, does, um, do those uh, enzymes or those genes explain differences in, um, in gut community metabolism? And to do so, um, we uh, went back to our 28 uh, human gut communities. And uh, you remember, I've showed you this data. We um, incubated entire fecal communities and tested for their capacity to convert diltiazine to its metabolite, this acetyl, Diltiazine. And you can appreciate here from the different lines, which each presents a different donor, that individual's microbiome varies dramatically in its capacity to metabolize diltiazine. We then, um, based on the gene that we identified, we um, designed a qPCR assay to quantify the abundance of the, of, of the enzyme or the gene that encodes the enzyme. And when we plot them against each other, activity versus abundance of that gene, we find a fairly good um, correlation suggesting that this one single gene in the gut microbiome is capable to explain the, the metabolic acti activity of an entire gut community, which from a chemical perspective is quite remarkable given that a deacetylation is chemically speaking not such an exciting um, a reaction. Nevertheless, there seems to be a single gene in the gut microbiome that um, explains the activity or um, modulates the activity of the entire um, community. And with that, I want to summarize. I wanted to show you how we use high-throughput screening approaches 
um, and mass spectrometry in combination with genetic tools, with notobiotic animals and um, some, some mathematical modeling to better understand microbe microbe interactions and metabolic interactions um, between the host and the microbiome. And then more on the applied side, um, drugs are good chemical tools, but they're also clinically relevant, how we try to understand um, how the gut microbiome influences drug response and toxicity. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Michael. That was a very nice uh, pipeline uh, you have there. Thanks for sharing. Uh, so we have a question from Isabel Ward. Uh, can you turn the mic on, Isabel? Hello, Michael. I can't really see you, but I hope that you can hear me. Um, so the the um, influence of uh, ba bacteriodetes tecta, beteta, so to speak, is is really transcends any drug, right? So that that's if I'm correct, that's the bacteria that. Uh, uh, basically is, is one of the most important for the metabolism, for the general metabolism on, on the gut ecosystem, isn't it? Um, I probably wouldn't dare to go that far, that B theta is, is more important than, than other um, bacteroidea strains or other gut strains. I think we know, we know a lot about um, uh, B theta, uh, just because at the time when we performed that study, it was um, one of the easier ones to um, do genetics on. Um, but um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't point out that, or I wouldn't uh, recognize B theta as being uh, much different from other bacteria strains. Okay. Okay. So, so you're saying that there could be a specificity for this that you are uh, telling us, and not. Uh, you know, that this strain would not really be uh, um, not a keystone because it's a name for the, the ones in, at low abundance, but uh, a, um, a major, a, a bacteria of major importance for the general metabolism. Yeah, you, you don't want to. I, I wouldn't go that far. Okay. 